Okay, in this video, we're going to go over some advanced sequences. So we're going to be adding up numbers. And the reason I call them advanced is they're not as straightforward as they were in the other two videos. So let me give you an example. Let's say I want to add up the odd numbers, starting with 3, 5, 7. And I want to go all the way up to 99. Scary. Now, let's call this set A. Set B, I want to take the even numbers, and I want to go all the way up to 98. Now, a very typical question on the GRE, and even the GMAT for that matter, is what is set A, that is the sum of set A, all these numbers added up, from that we're going to subtract the sum of set B. How do we do that? Okay, so what we learned is we always want to take the first and the last, and we want to add them together. So let's work on set A first. We take the first and the last, and that gives us 102. And we always want to divide by 2 because we're pairing off numbers. Now here comes the tricky part. How many odd numbers are there between 3 and 99? And what we should do is we take now the last minus the first, and here's the twist. Before we add 1, as we did in the other videos, we actually want to divide by 2. And the reason why we're dividing by 2 is that's the difference between each digit. Because they're all numbers, they go up by 2 each time. Once we've done that, then we can add 1. And that will give us the number of terms. And so that's what's happening there in the right hand side. So number of terms. Here, we're taking the first plus last divided by 2. That gives us basically the sum of the outside numbers. And then when you move 1 up and you move 1 down, the constant sum will be 102. So let's actually plug in the missing information here. Last term is 99. First term is 3 divided by 2 plus 1. That gives us 96 divided by 2, which is 48, plus this 1 is 49. So now when we add this together here, 99 plus 3 is 102 divided by 2 times 49. Now, oftentimes you can see that if you are at least taking the GRE and not the GMAT, you can use a calculator. It will definitely behoove you to do so. Now, I'm going to take that 2 out of there, I'm going to divide it, and I'm going to get 51 times 49. Now, I don't have a calculator, so that may be scary, but I know a cool little rule. When you are dealing with numbers that are very close to square of numbers, that is, if one number is 1 greater, 51 is 1 greater than 50, and one number is less, 1 less than 50, in this case, then the result of this number will always be 50 squared, or this number here squared, minus 1. And so 50 squared is 2,500. 2,500 minus 1 is 2,499. And so now I'm going to circle this. And this is really important when you're doing scratch work. Some people oftentimes fiercely scribble away on a scratch paper, and that's great as long as you know where the important figures are. So 24.99 is huge because that's the sum here of set A. And so when I figure out what set B is, I'm going to have to make sure that I remember 24.99. Now set B shouldn't be too hard because we already did set A. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring set B up over here, and I'm going to follow the exact same process I did there. So I'm going to add up here first, first and last. It gives me 100. 98 plus 2 is 100. Divided by 2. The number of terms is last minus first. 98 minus 2 is 96. 96 divided by 2 is 48. And 48 plus 1 is 49. And just like that, we get 50 times 49. And that gives us, well, 50 times 50 is 2,500. We have one less 50 because it's 49 not 50, so we take 50 and subtract that. 2,500 minus 50 gives us 2,450. And now we can take this information down here and set up the answer. 2,499 minus 2,450. And that gives us 49. And there's our answer. Now this is great. You may think, wow, that was nice. We got to the answer, but that did take a lot of time. And part of the reason I'm showing you this is so you can see how this formula functions, how when you don't have consecutive integers, you're adding them up, you can still find the sum. 
However, there's a quicker way of doing this, and that's called the stacking method. And I don't have much room here, but the stacking method is so efficient. I bet in this little bit of space, I can show you and get the exact same answer here. So we have set A, right? Set A is 3. Set B is 2. You add them up. 3 plus 5, 4, 6. I'm just going to write them out just a little to show you the concept here. So each time, what's the difference between the two? Remember, we're subtracting them at the end of the day. Well, 1, 5 minus 4 is 1, 7 minus 6 is 1. So each time we pair up numbers like this, we're always going to get 1. And exactly how many numbers are there? Well, remember this formula right here? And when we put this in there, we counted the numbers, number of terms. And that answer was 49. There are 49 basically stackings. And if each stacking differs by 1, 49 times 1 is 49. And there's the difference between set A and B as well.